Part 3 To the Future Chapter 8 Destiny Islands Myriad stars glittered in the heavens above a small and very special world, or perhaps it would be better to call it a fragment of one, directly connected to the ocean between. A tall solitary spire rose from this island floating in space. Gorsh, the king must be pretty far away now. Whack! Donald and Goofy sat at the bottom of the steps leading to the tower, where they gazed at the sky. The two of them had arrived here just a short time ago. They had come to ask Yen Sid, master of the tower and teacher to King Mickey, for information on their leech's whereabout. However, it turned out that not even the great sorcerer Yen Sid was privy to this knowledge. Each and every one of the stars hanging in the sky was a world, and the king was supposedly out there on one of them. But they couldn't find him. The two of them sighed, slumping with dejection when a great light flashed down from the sky. King Mickey? cried Donald immediately, but the one who emerged from the fading brilliance was a young boy. Nope, doesn't look like him. Goofy replied with disappointment until he spotted the glowing star-like object in the boy's hand. Look! That feller's got the star shard the king borrowed. Donald leaped up with a cry. King? The boy Ventus inclined his head in confusion as he waited for the pain of his rough landing to pass. Who's this king? If he had the star shard, then maybe they mean Mickey? Ventus got to his feet, ready to tell them about Mickey, when Donald grabbed him and Goofy started shoving him forward. Huh? Hey, take it easy! Hurry up! Donald exclaimed, hurrying Ven along into the tower. Their faces were grave as they led him up the stairs. Okay, but Mickey is my friend, and... He is? Donald stopped and peered up at Ven. Yeah, we fought together, but then we got separated, and... Ven's expression grew somber. Donald and Goofy shared a glance. If you're a friend of the king's, then there's nothing to worry about. I'm his royal knight, Goofy. Whack! And I'm Donald, the court magician! I'm Ventus. Just call me Ven. Ven smiled after he introduced himself. He had the feeling he would get along just fine with these two. Where could the king have gone off to? Goofy looked down sadly. Maybe we can find out with the star shard. You mean this? Donald handed it over to Donald. Quack! Donald carefully inspected the darkened star shard. We should go see Master Yin Sid, Goofy suggested, and the name rang a bell. Yeah, I've definitely heard that name before, but where? Who's Master Yen Sid? The king's teacher, Goofy replied. If he was the king's teacher, then they probably had the same relationship as Ven and Master Ericus. But why did the name sound so familiar? Anyway, let's get going, Donald urged impatiently. Okay, Ven replied, and he climbed the staircase alongside the duo. They opened a compact wooden door and entered the room beyond to find a wizened old man with a very long beard sitting within. He was draped in a robe and wearing a very wizardly pointed hat patterned with moons and stars, and he regarded them with large, commanding eyes. Donald and Goofy stood at attention on either side of Ven. Yen Sid, sir, we just got a clue as to where the king might be, stated Goofy, his posture straight as an arrow. Ah, Ventus. The first thing out of Yen Sid's mouth was Ven's name. Though a bit surprised that he knew it, Ven had heard Yen Sid's name before too. Maybe they had some connection. The sorcerer continued when he saw Ven's confusion. Ericus has told me much about you. If I am not mistaken, you were ordered to return home. Well, sir, I... That came out of nowhere. Ven looked around fretfully. At this rate, he might get hauled straight back to the master. But then Yen Sid said, no matter. Huh? Mickey has difficulty following directions too, continued the sorcerer. Ven was so relieved, he couldn't resist a smile. Where is this clue to Mickey's whereabouts? I have it here! The ever-respectful Donald set the star shard he had received from Ven moments ago upon the table. This feller, Venquist, er, Ventilate, er, Veggie... Just call him Ven, shouted an irritated Donald as Goofy racked his brains trying to remember the name. Sure, that's what I usually go by, Ven replied with a grin. Donald smiled at last too and made his report to Yen Sid. Ven had it when he got here. Please explain. The sorcerer asked Ven. I ran into Mickey, but we got sent flying into the light. 
I don't know where he went. He was in the same world as the one where I found it. As I thought, Mickey has been hurling himself from one world to the next. That explains why I could not discern his location. Yen Sid received Ven's explanation with a nod. You can now, can't you? Donald asked, full of concern. Yes, I can. He began to move his hands about. As he did, a white mist, like smoke or a cloud, arose, revealing an image of Mickey collapsed in a wasteland. Mickey! The king! Then Donald and Goofy all leaped forward at once with a shout, but then the image vanished, and the mist dispersed. What happened? Donald asked frantically. Where'd he go? Is he okay? There is a dark and powerful force that is interfering with my magic. Yen Sid replied with a small shake of his head. Just tell us where the king is, Mr. Yen Sid, sir, and me and Donald will go right there and save him. Goofy declared as he stood upright in a knightly manner. You two? That may not be adequate. The pair shared a look. Then Goofy took his shield in hand, and Donald took up his staff. But I'm the captain of the king's royal knights, Goofy declared, and I'm his magician, Donald added. Yen Sid's mouth remained closed in a tight line. However, Ven finally broke through the tension. I'll find him. I recognize the place we saw. If you go, we'll go with you, Donald offered. Ven gave a slight shake of his head. No, I owe him. Mickey saved me once, and I want to return the favor. Aww. Donald let out a disappointed sigh. But... Ven replied with a smile, fixing each of them with a warm look. Don't worry, I swear I'll bring him back safe. Ven looked at Yen Sid. The corners of the sorcerer's frown lifted upward in a smile, and he nodded. Very well, Ventus. We will leave it to you. Ven dipped his head, then turned back to Donald and Goofy. Ven! The king is in your hands. Donald and then Goofy both entrusted the king to him. You can count on me! Ven replied confidently to the two of them, then turned away from Yen Sid and bounded off. He had to get to Mickey as quickly as possible. Ven put on his armor as he dashed down the steps of the tower, not wanting to waste another moment. Hold on, Mickey. Tara made his way along the lanes between after he left Neverland. He didn't have a destination. He just had to keep moving forward, to track down Vanitas, to prove Master Xehanort was right about him. He knew all of this, and yet he still had questions about so many things. His own darkness, hope, wishes, the treasures he held dear, Aqua, Ven, becoming a Keyblade Master. As all sorts of things raced through his mind, a beam of light swept over Terra. Raising his head, he found that a swirling luminescence was coming together right in the direction he was headed. It was so incredibly warm, swelling and swelling until eventually it swallowed Terra. He had felt this warmth somewhere before. The light guided him to his next destination, a beach. He was on a small island where the sun was on the verge of sinking into the sea. He could hear the rush of the surf. No one seemed to be around. The waves lapped up on the white sands, only to retreat. Tara closed his eyes and let the tide fill his ears, basking in the pleasant warmth spreading across his heart, not unlike the light from before. The waves washed across his feet, and when he looked down, he spied a fruit shaped like a star. Tara picked it up. Somewhere out there, there's this tree with star-shaped fruit. Recalling what Aqua had once said, Tara removed the Wayfinder charm from his pocket. This island must be home to that tree she mentioned. When he scanned the seashore, Tara's gaze landed on the source of the fruit, growing on a tiny islet connected by a long, narrow bridge. It looked like he could reach it from over by the small hut at the edge of the sand. Tara returned the fruit to the sea. Still clutching his wayfinder, walked down the beach. The sand was a pristine white. Each step crunched underfoot and left footprints that disappeared just as quickly as they came. The only other noise came from the waves. The shack was dim inside when he opened the door, and the gloom became almost uncanny when he closed it behind him. Tara relied on what little light remained as he climbed the stairs in the rear of the shack. A sudden thought took him by surprise, and he came to a stop and stared at the wayfinder. The weak evening sun streaked down onto it through the crack in the dilapidated roof. Motes of dust in the air danced in the little ray of light. Tara clutched the wayfinder tightly. Anxiety gripped his chest like a vice. Do I still have a connection with Aqua and Ben? He was worried his bond with them might have been broken. I wonder if we'll ever be a team again. 
Tarek gazed up at the light streaming through the gap in the roof. But the light has led me here. What am I supposed to do? Tucking the Wayfinder back in his pocket, Tara started forward once more. He opened the door of the shack and walked outside under the crimson evening sun. He closed his eyes against the glare for a moment, but the setting sun still shone on him, casting a bright red over his shut eyelids. When Tara opened his eyes and resumed his progress, he heard two sets of footsteps behind him, jumping down from the hut and dashing right past him. It was a pair of young boys, one with chestnut-colored hair, the other with silver. Hey, slow down! Would you just wait for me? Giving up already? Come on, Sora. That's enough! I can't run anymore! The two boys jumped onto the tree with the star-shaped fruit and sat down to watch the sunset. They were laughing as they talked about something, but Tara wasn't sure what. He stopped and observed them from behind. Tara had no intention of interrupting, but when he was about to walk away, he sensed something special about the boy with the silver hair. It was light. A kind of dull luster that was still weak, but special. Perhaps that luminescence he'd felt had guided him here so that he would meet this boy. The light wants me to do something. Maybe something only I can do? Tara began to stride away, then leaped down from the walkway onto the sand. Oh, ahoy! We're over here! Just then, the brown-haired boy called Sora stood and waved at a small boat out on the water. Riku, race ya! First one to the boat gets to be captain! Come on! Sora dashed off before the silver-haired boy he'd called Riku could respond. So Riku's his name. You call that running? Sora came sprinting by Terra. Riku resignedly got to his feet and began trudging after him, but he came to a halt near Terra. Their gazes met. Hey, did you come from the outside worlds? Huh? Why would you say that? Terra was slightly caught off guard by the unexpected question. Not many knew about the existence of other worlds. How had Riku found out? Because nobody lives out here. And I know you're not from the main island. Smart kid. He accepted the answer, but it didn't explain how the boy was aware of other worlds. The normal assumption would be that Terra came from elsewhere on this one. So, he decided to ask a question of his own. What about you? What are you doing here? Oh, my friend's dad took us out on the boat. He replied, shooting a glance at Sora a short distance away on the jetty, he continued. This is where we like to play, but they won't let us row out here by ourselves, not till we get older. Riku sounded miffed as he kicked at the sand. Must be hard, huh? Stuck in one place. Riku approached the water's edge and stared out at the crimson horizon. I heard once that there was a kid who left for good, he said. And as he did, Tara saw someone else standing there for a moment almost superimposed over the boy. Tara didn't recognize him, but the young man looked familiar. It was the one who had ventured beyond the borders of this world in his youth. And when Riku turned back to face him, he became a young man too. Why am I seeing this other person and Riku all grown up? Is the light telling me the future, destiny? If so, then why? So, how did you get here anyway? The boy asked, bringing Tara back to the present. Riku was back to normal as a boy, not the other man or the teenaged Riku. Tara couldn't quite conceal his bewilderment, but he asked, Is there some reason you're interested in the outside world? Riku turned away from him to the horizon once again. Yeah, he said. I want to be strong one day, like that kid who left. He went to the outside world. I bet he's really strong now. What was the kid who left up to now? Tara wondered. I know what's out there somewhere, the strength I need, he said determinedly. Strength. It was the same desire Tara had embraced for so long. He wanted to be strong, and he believed it would make everything work out. However, strength for what? What created that desire in me? When Tara asked, Riku turned and smiled. To protect the things that matter, you know, like my friends. Tara nodded deeply. Yeah. The reason I wanted to be strong was to protect what matters to me, to keep Aqua, Ven, and the world safe. Outside this tiny world is a much bigger one, Tara explained, and Riku stepped closer. Tara summoned his keyblade to his hand. Riku stared at him and his keyblade quietly as the man knelt down on the sand and held the weapon out to Riku. In your hand, take this key. So long as you have the makings, then through the simple act of taking, its wielder you shall one day be. And you will find me, friend. 
No ocean will contain you then. No more borders around or below or above, so long as you champion the ones you love. Riku gripped Terra's keyblade in his small hand, and with that, the ceremony reached its silent conclusion. Riku! Sora called from a ways off. Riku let go of the keyblade and waved at his friend. Come on, hurry it up! Sora cried, bouncing up and down. Terra dismissed his keyblade and whispered into Riku's ear. You've got to keep this a secret, okay? Otherwise all the magic will wear off. Okay. Terra patted Riku on the head when the boy nodded. Impatient, Sora came dashing toward Riku, and the boy ran to meet his friend in the middle of the beach. Hey, what was that all about? Sora's curiosity was insatiable. Ah, uh, you know. Riku looked away. No, what? Why won't you tell me? Who was that guy? Somebody you know? Sora fired off questions in rapid succession, but Riku just began walking away. Maybe. Aw, oh, there you go again. Just tell me. Sora hustled after him. I really can't. I've got to keep it a secret. Not with me, you don't. I'm like the best secret keeper in the world. Nice try. Aw, Riku. Tara slowly stood upright as he watched the two of them leave, protecting the things that mattered, like his friends. He still had something he could protect. Even the powers of darkness could be used for good, to help others. Tara went on his way. Then touched down on that mysterious land where he once fought that masked boy. He was sure this was the world where Mickey lay fallen. A strong chill wind blew against Ven, carrying the clouds of dust. Mickey! Ven spotted him a short distance away and rushed up to him. Try as he might to help Mickey up, the king was out cold. What should he do? Should he take Mickey back to Yen Sid? What was the best course of action? We meet again, boy. At that moment, he heard a voice. He was sure no one had been there before. Ven got to his feet and turned toward the man. Master? The one who had stood before him was Master Zaynard. Just as Ven realized that he hadn't seen him since Terra and Aqua's Mark of Mastery exam, a dull pain pierced his temples. He had been to these wastelands with Master Zaynard before, and he was almost hurled into the ocean once more, before eventually being placed in the care of Master Ericus. The memories were finally coming back. Ven dropped to his knees. The ache spread. I'm gonna throw up. I don't understand. It hurts so much. Whose memories are these? They're mine. This is everything I forgot. Ah, oh, yes. So you are starting to realize what you lost. Oh, but not for good. You had to lose in order to find. Now it can all be yours again if you only reach out and take it. Master Zaynort sounded so far away. Ven didn't understand. The wind was loud over his voice. The ache in his head intensified. Reclaim the part that left you. Clash with him. Pure light against pure darkness. To forge the ultimate key. The all-powerful Keyblade. The pain stepped deeper and then collapsed to the ground. Keyblade? His body was without strength. All he could do was gasp out that word. He had no idea what was happening. He didn't know what Master Zaynor was talking about either. All that stuck in his head was that one word. Not the Keyblades you and I carry. Key, the most ancient letter, some say Kai, but the meaning is the same, death, a letter that spells endings. When Master Zaynort raised his hands toward the heavens, a black vortex spread among the clouds and began to draw everything into the air. It was possible that within the vortex was its own sort of ocean between. And I have the power to make it? Ben couldn't fathom what Master Zaynort was saying. The black swirl grew with small crackles of dark lightning. Correct. Ericus knows it too. He knows exactly what you are. The master? Ven whispered questioningly from the ground. Haven't you ever wondered why he never granted you permission to leave his side, to grow stronger? Ericus was frightened of you. If you were to learn the truth, realize what you are, he never trusted you. Why else would he keep you within his sight at all times? A dark bolt struck right by Ven's face, bringing him back to his senses. The word Keyblade rose up in his hazy mind, along with his training with Master Ericus. Yeah, he never let me see other worlds, no matter how much I asked. He slowly climbed to his feet. He remembered now. He'd always been left behind to hold down the fort. He'd always believed it was because he was still too young. Had he been wrong? Go. Master Zaynort stretched out his hand toward Ven with a gust of wind behind it. You can ask the man yourself. Learn the truth, 
And remember, you have greater purpose. A stormy gale lifted Ven and blew him up and up, until he was sucked into the inky darkness above. Still unconscious, Mickey was also pulled into the blackness, where he vanished along with Ven's screams. Ven came into the lanes between. His armor had been activated somehow. He couldn't see Mickey anywhere. Ven clutched his head as another dull pain overtook him. The sudden rush of memories hadn't felt real. Were those mine? And what's the Keyblade? What am I? What does Master Ericus know about me that I don't? The land of departure floated in the distance. Ven summoned his Keyblade and hurled it into space. It transformed into a glider and drifted back toward him. He spurred his Keyblade along toward his destination. A light shot by Terra as he raced along atop his Keyblade. It was moving incredibly fast, but he could tell it was Ven. Where was he headed? That didn't matter. Ven was traveling much too quickly. All was not well with his friend. Terra hurriedly made to chase him, only to hear a voice in his head. Master Terra, come find me. We must speak at once. Master Xehanort! He called the voice's owner by name. Terra cast a worried look toward Ven's light, then steered his keyblade toward the summons. It was coming from the Badlands he had visited months before. Still aboard his keyblade, Terra drew up before Master Xehanort atop a boulder on the edge of a cliff. Master Xehanort, you wish to see me? There is no time to lose. I've terrible news. Ventus has stumbled upon the secrets of his origins. Ven! Terra's breath caught in his throat at the news. I just saw him. He passed right in front of me. What happened? Ventus is on his way home. If you could have seen the fury in his eyes. I'm certain he's capable of anything. I fear the boy may attempt to force the truth out of Arrakis. Master Terra, you must hurry back and see to your friend's safety. Of course. Terra replied. After a small bow, he urged his keyblade onward. He was going to Master Arrakis. He was going home. Aqua soared the lanes between after leaving Neverland. She hadn't sensed Terra or Ven there, but she had encountered the boy in the mask again. Where had he gone off to? Either way, she was still in pain. That boy had been no joke during their battle in Neverland. Who was he? What does he want? He had been on a whole other level compared to their run-in at Radiant Garden. Her ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him at all meant that Aqua's skills had improved too during her travels, but she was still uneasy. With these thoughts in her heart, Aqua raced along on her keyblade until a sudden warmth caused her to look up. I sense light. Before her was a radiant tide. Aqua plunged forward, practically drawn into it. She landed upon a small island swarmed by the evening sun. This is... Aqua crossed over a small narrow bridge. All she could hear was the sound of waves. As she walked toward the crimson sky and sea, she smiled as she spotted a tree bearing star-shaped fruit on the islet ahead. So this is where they grow. Aqua removed her wayfinder from her pocket and held it firmly. Somewhere out there, there's this tree with star-shaped fruit, and the fruit represents an unbreakable connection. Terra, then, I hope we're ready for the storm that's coming, she murmured anxiously. Her battle with Vanitas had created a sense of foreboding in her heart. Aqua wasn't sure she could take him if they clashed again, but she had to, for Ven and Terra's sakes. Hey, wait up! Too late, Zora. See you at the finish line. Aqua turned around as she heard children's voices. Two boys, one with chestnut hair and the other with silver, were racing each other. The brown-haired boy was falling behind. Apparently, the finish line was below the walkway where she was. The chestnut-haired boy panted heavily with his hands on his knees. One more time! You just got lucky! He pleaded. His chances of winning didn't seem great, though. Giggling at the two boys, she walked along the planks and hopped down in front of them. They looked up at her quizzically. Whoa! The kid with brown hair yelped in surprise when she landed right before him. He scratched his head bashfully. The silver-haired boy beside him had simply been staring at her, and he gave Aqua another look. He almost burned with sincerity, just like Tara. There was an air about the grinning boy with chestnut hair that reminded her of Ven. Actually, he was the spitting image. She chuckled despite herself, and the two boys shared a look. One of you might be special enough. The words left Aqua's mouth before she even realized. She felt a special light from these two. Hey, you two mind telling me your names? She asked, kneeling down before them. I'm Sora, answered the brown-haired boy cheerfully, raising a hand. And you? Riku. The boy with silver hair replied quietly. What Aqua had felt from this boy was the presence of a keyblade. 
Someone had already passed this boy the power. Maybe Terra? If so, there didn't need to be two chosen wielders so near to each other. She wouldn't set these two on the same course as her and her friends. If their paths diverged, the way hers and Terra's had, they would only suffer. Aqua turned back towards Sora and asked him a question. Sora, do you like Riku? Of course I like him! He's my best friend! Good. Just like something Ven would say. It made her happy. So then, if something happens, and Riku is about to get lost, or say he starts wandering down a dark path alone, you make sure to stay with him and keep him safe. That's your job, Sora, and I'm counting on you to do it, okay? Sora and Riku looked at each other uncertainly. Aqua put a hand on each of their heads. She was certain fate had something special in store for the two of them. Maybe their destiny had already begun. Let's go, Sora. Okay. The pair walked off, and Aqua stood up slowly as she watched them go. Terra, what's to become of us? I have no choice but to go. She had faith that while they may have gone their separate ways, someday they would find themselves together, working toward the same purpose, just like she had found herself here with Riku and Sora. And with that, Aqua strode off.